so we can continue. Uh, before we get into the next section here, which is about God's blueprint for the local church, um, I was thinking as different ones of us we were sharing, if there are uh, those who are aspiring church planters, you know, uh, just uh, know that uh, the journey is not easy, but when it is from God, He gives the grace, He gives the strength. So uh, we re I'm reminded of a mother giving birth. So it's not easy. You ask any mother, it's definitely never easy. But uh, the joy of, of seeing the, the baby or the child um, or the, the fruit of that labor, Okay, but in this case, it's a, a spiritual fruit you know, that gives us all the joy and that is totally worth it. So uh, let, let's, I, I just do not want any of us to feel that hey, it's so hard. It's, it can be very difficult to actually uh, move in, in this direction of church planting and all that. But if God has called you, uh, it's, it's a journey of faith, you know. And so just step forward and uh, as much as it's challenging, it's exciting. And Sister Rupa also said that. She said adventurous. Okay. It's it's a good adventure and uh, we, we will get to know God better. We'll get to learn to depend on God more. And it's a beautiful journey. So I just want to encourage those who are aspiring to uh, look at it as a wonderful um, wonderful assignment that God wants to hand you. Okay, So uh, yeah, with that, we can move on to the next section here, which is about God's blueprint for the local church. So now I am on page, uh, there's no number given here, 47, yeah, page 47 in the House of God, APC publication. Okay, so, uh, when we want to build something, we all know that there needs to be an, a, a plan, you know, put in place. Uh, and generally, people use a, a blueprint and then they construct a building. So similarly, we must think about the blueprint that God has for the local church before going ahead and building it. Because what are we doing? We are talking about... Uh, planting God's house, nurturing God's house, taking care of God's house. But how does God want that to be done? That's the question we're asking. So we need to know that blueprint or that pattern from God himself. Now, when we talk about church, all of us in this class, we can have our own ideas. We can have our own um, preferences. We might think that church should look this way or that way. Uh, but ultimately, you know, it's God's opinion that matters about what the local church is supposed to be or what the, you know, the global body of Christ is supposed to be. So when we are building the house of God, it's best to refer to the characteristics which are pointed out in God's word as blueprint for us to build the church. So in the word of God, there are at least 10 areas that are highlighted, uh, which we are going to study in this course. And we must build the local church in line with those 10 areas. Okay. Uh, now, there are, there are images uh, given in the, in the Bible, things like, you know, the church is the bride of Christ, the church is the army, the church is... Um, the temple of God. So there are 10 such blueprints and each one of them means something. So we will expand on every single one of them as we go forward. And whether we are a pastor, whether we are a leader of a church or we might say that, no, I'm not in that capacity yet. I'm just serving at, uh, you know, another level. But that doesn't matter. Every single one of us who is serving the church must bear in mind that we are here to build according to God's blueprint, not our blueprint. So that's what we will discuss. And uh, we trust that you know, that will uh, help all of us to renew our minds to what the church should really look like. Uh, and uh, I think it's page 132. If you could... 
just go along with me to that page. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, 119. Yeah, 119, sorry. Yeah. So that captures it, uh, captures all the 10 uh, images of what the church is supposed to be. So I think if you have a look at this, you will know the topics that we are going to discuss. So it's listed out for us, church as the bride, uh, where we will talk about the love between the church and Christ, the church as the house of prayer and worship, where we will talk about how you know, God wants us to be in this position of seeking him. The church as a temple where God is honored, where Christ is honored. The wine and the branches. So that's a picture of intimacy, how God really wants us to be connected to him. The church as a lampstand or a source of light in the dark world. The church as the body of Christ. Us um, being one with Christ and representing Christ to the world, the church as the family of God. So the relationships within the church right, and our, our relationship with one another, how that is uh, meant to look, we will discuss about that. The pillar of truth, the church being the upholder of truth in a world where the standards are constantly shifting. Then the church as God's chosen people, where we demonstrate kingdom, culture, and values to the people. And then the church as an army, where we um, exercise our authority, we exercise our dominion on spiritual darkness. So these are the 10 uh, pictures that we will go to one by one. Today, we will take up the first one, which is the church as the body of Christ. So we can go back to page 47. Let me go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we will learn along all these lines. Um, there's a passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 where uh, you know Paul writes to the Corinthian believers and he says that when he does his work for the uh, house of God or the church, he builds as a wise master builder. So what he is referring to is he's saying basically he goes by the instructions that God has given him according to God's blueprint. So he says, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. Remember, we uh, uh, said that there are co-workers. There are many people who are building the kingdom of God and everybody works together. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about how he's careful to build with gold, silver, precious stones, uh, because whatever work we do, eventually it is going to get tested and tested by fire. So you know, he kind of exhorts and warns uh, the people who are engaging in building God's house to use the material which will not perish. Okay? So that refers to us building the house of God with spiritual resources and with the right intentions. So we must be careful to do that. Now if we don't do it that way, how else can we build the church you know we can build it with man made ideas we can build it for carnal reasons right fleshly reasons uh, we could build it just directed by how the market uh, you know goes up goes down these are the best techniques available uh, so many things we we could do our research and build the church in that way but then you know it that that is not directed by the word that's not directed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and therefore, that work will not last for uh, eternity. So we must bear in mind that God's work should be done in God's way. So let's move on to talking about the body of Christ. 
So the church is the body of Christ. Uh, and as we see, uh, you know, this picture, the, hu the human body, uh, it, it's easy for us to understand and relate with. So uh, let's look at the church as the body of Christ. So this, the scripture right on top, chapter 8, Colossians 1, 18, it says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first one from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. So it talks about a body and the head of the body is Christ. Okay, So he is the head of the body. And who is the body? The church. So we, the church, are the body and Christ is the head. So what are some things that we can learn from us, um, from the human body, right? And relate that to how the church should be. Uh, so we know that in a physical body, everything is connected. Now we talked about Christ being the head and us being the body. Obviously, there's a connection. You don't have you know, just the head floating around and the body moving on its own own that would be very scary it, that doesn't work that way so in the same manner we are connected we are connected to christ okay and when we are connected to christ the life of christ is supposed to flow through the people of god it's supposed to flow through the body because who's the body the church is the body so uh, that is our position and we are told in Acts 17, 28, that we live, move, and have our being in him. So in him, our connectedness uh, with Christ is very, very important. So uh, you could look at it in the broad way and say, yeah, the church, which is everyone who um, is a believer, everyone who is part of the kingdom of God. And you can also look at it as, how does this apply to my local church? So yes, in my local church, this is the way every believer must relate to God. You know, we live, move, and have our being in Him. So every believer is supposed to be connected to the head of the body. If there is no connection, you know, uh, and we, we could you know, keep explaining all these things in detail, uh, if there's a believer and the believer is not connected to God or the local church and there's no connection of the local church with Christ, then, you know, how is it the body of Christ? So uh, relationship, intimacy, connectedness is important both individually and collectively. And we must keep that. We must maintain that. And uh, to know that, you know, when, when the uh, body and the head are connected, our identity flows, you could say, um, in a way, the, the entire body, you know, we have an identity, right? But generally, uh, when we talk about a person, we would ref we can recall, uh, you know, their face and say, oh, okay, this person. But obviously, we are not referring to the head separately and the body separately. Because when we are referring to the head, we know that, you know, uh, we mean one person. They are connected. So the identity of that person is their face. Right? And so in the same way, the head of the church, who is Christ Jesus, the body must receive its identity from the head. Okay, uh, And that's how it should be. So how does this apply? Basically, every believer needs to know who they are in Christ Jesus. So if we don't know that, we don't know who we are. You know, the body has no clue uh, who the head is, you know, what this person is all about, then what happens? You know, basically, you, you really don't understand what you are about. So for the church, for the body, it's very important for that body to derive its identity from the head and for the identity to flow from the head. So our identity in Christ Jesus is what is important. Now, as a local church, we understand this. Every believer should know who they are in Christ Jesus. Now, looking at various local churches that belong to the larger body of Christ. How, how can we interpret this? See, even then, 
Now we may belong to different denominations. We may belong to a certain way of doing church. We may belong to uh, subscribing to a certain doctrine. All right. So there are a lot of differences even among uh, the so-called believers. But at the end of the day, we're all connected to the head. Okay. And the head is connected to us. So how do we relate to someone who may not agree with our doctrine? As long as they are born again, they are part of the same body as us. And they are connected to the head, we are connected to the head. So we relate to them, you know, with, with that kind of uh, an honor. Okay. And um, we, we don't divide, don't bring divisions among the people who belong to the body of Christ. Okay. So that's how we would apply that. So yes, we've understood now that uh, the body has a head and the head is the preeminent one. Uh, so, you know, the head makes the decisions. We must be connected to the, the body must be connected to the head. And also that the identity of the body flows from the head. Now, moving forward, what are the other things that uh, come through? Because the church is the body of Christ. You know, the body uh, represents the person, right? It represents the person. So we are told that we are the body of Christ. And we've already said that uh, on the earth, we are the ones who have to exercise authority. Uh, and God has called the church to be that representative. Uh, a scripture here from Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23 it says, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Again, that relationship between the head and the body. And we're told that God has put everything under whose feet? Under the feet of Jesus. And Jesus is the head of the body. So if everything has been put under the feet of the head, Everything has been put under the feet of the body as well, right? So Jesus rules and reigns with authority over every work of darkness. And that is true for the church. That is true for you and me. Because if something has been put under the feet of Jesus, it has been put under our feet. So we stand in authority and on the earth, you know, we have to represent who Christ uh, is. Uh, in the book of John, uh, 1 John, John writes seven times, he says, as he is about Christ Jesus. He exhorts the believer and says that you must represent the Lord Jesus. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Walk as he walked. See him. We see him as he is. So basically, uh, he's, he's pointing us to Jesus every time. And he's saying that, we are called to be his representatives. So, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. So, uh, what we need to understand is that the body is here to continue revealing Christ to the world. Okay. And that is our task. So, how should we uh, reveal Christ? We must reveal Christ accurately. We must reveal him, um, you know, uh, in, a, in a complete way, in a complete way, the best that is possible. And of course, we have uh, his word working in us and his spirit working in us. But that's what we are called to, to represent the Lord Jesus. So he is in heaven right now, but we are the ones who have to reveal the Lord Jesus to the world. Okay, so uh, that again is a duty of the body. All right. Uh, now, we also see that, you know, we can reveal Christ completely. So in your notes, there is uh, some explanation about that. So positionally, we are told that, you know, we, um, we are complete in him. Okay? We are complete in him. But of course, as we're living out our life here on earth, in a practical way, we have to demonstrate that. Uh, and, uh, you know, that again, that is a journey that can be, uh, a, a, you know, growth journey. Uh, but it is possible because Jesus Christ has already done it. We're already complete in him. So we can represent Jesus well. We can represent him 
completely, we can represent him accurately. So the, that's the job or that's the work of the body. Then uh, the body is supposed to do what the head instructs it to do. Okay? So the head decides, okay, I'm going to go uh, jogging and uh, the body has to follow. Now, if the body doesn't follow, if just the, the, the brain decides and the body doesn't move with, with the head, then there is a, a problem there. So in the same way, when the Lord Jesus uh, has revealed his purposes, okay, when he has revealed his standards, if the body doesn't line up with it, which is us, every believer, and the local church and the global church, if we don't uh, align ourselves to that, you know, there will be a huge mismatch and that's not representing Christ correctly to the world. So uh, whatever Jesus has said, whatever he has done, whatever he has purposed uh, for the world, we are the ones who are in the place to execute it because we are in the world right now. So in a sense, we could say that we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. He is the head, but we are the hands, we are the feet, and we are here to do the will of God. Uh, and, you know, we move forward as representatives and hopefully, you know, uh, people will receive us because we are the father. Jesus said that the father sent him. Okay. And Jesus is sending us out. So we are the ones who are representing, we will do the bidding of the head who is the Lord Jesus Christ. So in that manner, we are here to execute the purposes of God. So whatever gets done, I think we've uh, touched on this earlier in the purpose of the church, the mission of the church, how we must step out. And there are so many different areas in our character, you know, how we can uh, have the fruit of the spirit uh, in the works that we do, how we can demonstrate good works in uh, carrying the power of God, demonstrating the power of God. We can reveal the glory of God. So we can be the hands and feet engaging uh, in the matters of the world and bringing about that change, uh, shedding the light of God right in the places of darkness. So that's how we exercise our position. Then as the body... Uh, here is the other truth that we can learn. The body has many parts. The head is only one part, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. But the body consists of various members. And similarly, the body of Christ, which is the church, consists of many members. So there are lots of individuals. How do we relate to these individuals? who are also part of the body. In 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 12 to 27, there is a passage that talks about relating with one another uh, and honoring one another just the way the human body, right? Human body, there are many parts. They, have, they all have their functions. It's not that one uh, body part is better than the other part. Because, you know, um, it, it gets to do a specific duty, not at all. There's no question of competition. There's no question of comparison. So uh, the eye will do its part. The ear will do its part. Every, every body part has its duty to perform. And you, know, you can't really, um, uh, what do you say? You, you can't not have that body part. OK, and uh, it is really essential. You can't you can't just let go of a certain body part at any time because you need every single body part. So as we study this passage, you know, we are able to uh, take the truth from there and apply it to the kingdom of God, apply it to the church uh, and the local church where we can say things like uh, there are many members in the body of Christ. So uh, uh, if you say the local, if you look at the local church, you can say, yes, individually, there are lots of people who belong to the body of Christ. And we could also say that every single person has their function. Okay. And uh, each member is very much needed. You can't replace them. Every person is irreplaceable. 
So whatever God has done in their lives, what uh, God is leading them to do, that can't be replaced. They are very much needed in the body of Christ. And there is there does not have to be competition because each one is gifted in a different way and each one is called to perform a different function. So as long as we are uh, doing our part joyfully, um, you know, and, and without competition, the body can accomplish what it is supposed to. Then uh, we are not independent, right? So we can't say that we can exist on our own. That doesn't happen even in our body parts. Nothing exists separately. So in the same way, in the church, people are dependent on one another. So we need each other, right? Uh, and uh, we have to learn to grow together, learn to do life together. So we are not independent of each other. And then, uh, yeah, I think we have touched on most of the parts most of the insights from this passage here. So basically, uh, it's an encouragement to uh, realize that, you know, we can, uh, like we can live, uh, it's not really live together because when you look at the church, the global church, uh, it's about celebrating one another. We all exist. We all exist, different denominations exist. Uh, and uh, we can learn to appreciate, we can learn to, um, you know, celebrate uh, each person's gifting and function and bless one another uh, and continue to be a part of the body of Christ. We don't really have to uh, ask God to do away with one particular person or one particular uh, denomination, uh, you know, group of people whom we may not like. So that's, that's not how the body works. So we trust God and we do our part. We learn to appreciate, we learn to celebrate uh, one another. Okay, a few more insights, a few more insights from this passage. Uh, I'll just add these as well. Uh, yeah, God has placed each one where he saw it best for us and as he was pleased. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 18. So again, why is a certain person doing what they're doing? God knows best. Now, we don't know why God has chosen uh, each one in their positions. Okay, so uh, once again, I talked about appreciating and celebrating one another. We must also appreciate and celebrate the decision that God has made uh, in choosing different ones of us for different tasks. Okay, so God knows best why he has positioned us where he has. And then it takes all of us to make up the whole. So every single person is needed. Uh, every single person can contribute to the life of the church. So uh, we don't find, uh, you know, some body parts not wanting to um, you know, do, do their part uh, on, on two days or three days. You know, you can't just say that, okay, today for uh, this weekend, my hands are taking a break. So they won't do anything. No, it just doesn't work like that. Everyone has to step in. Every body part has to step in. So if if the eye doesn't see, then, you know, the, the mouth cannot speak and the hand doesn't move. Every body part is need, very much needed. And it's only when each one does their part that you make up the whole. So in the same way, uh, uh, in the church, right, everyone's role is essential. Now, what if somebody says, okay, yeah, I, I'm not doing it. It does affect the others. Okay, so uh, we must understand that it's everyone is needed. Everyone's contribution is important. Uh, and it's only when each one steps up that we can make up the whole. Yeah, and nobody can claim independence. Also, in this passage, there's another uh, key point, which uh, which is that the whatever, um, like God gives greater honor to what seems to have less honor. So the body parts which have less honor, uh, you know, God God uh, gives them greater honor is what we need. So how do we understand this? See, in our side, we might uh, we might grade responsibilities in a certain way. So if you see someone uh, speaking 
uh, from the pulpit or if you see someone on the stage we might grade that as oh good ministry great ministry whereas there can be others who come in early you know uh, and and they kind of clean up the place they put the chairs they do all the other work that is required for the church to actually begin to gather right now who are we to say what is better than what it's god who sees each person's heart god who sees each person's ministry god who sees each person's worship right so for us whatever is seemingly less honorable god is the one who can give it more honor so i am reminded of the ministry of intercession the ministry of intercession is not in the public eye and there are so many people who serve faithfully maybe their entire lifetime praying and nobody even knows their name nobody even knows they did it but in the sight of god there is great honor for the ministry that they have done so in that manner the things that may be seemingly less honorable are actually more honorable in the sight of god so god is the one who judges and we must not treat anybody anybody's function uh, in a light way okay so uh, that is an additional point there and obviously uh, the entire body must learn to work uh, together and work well because if there are divisions if one body part withholds its function the body can't work right so in the same way uh, if there are divisions in the body of christ among the people of god it affects the whole body okay it affects it slows down uh, the work of the kingdom whatever we said so far representing jesus revealing jesus being the hands and feet of jesus all that gets hindered and hampered so divisions and strife in the body uh, is not something that god wants so with the example of the human body paul actually tried to bring out all these insights and let people know that there are many of us who make up the whole and we have to learn to appreciate where god has put us learn to honor one another and learn to work together learn to uh, you know keep away division strife hatred and things that destroy us okay so uh, these are some insights that we gain from this chapter uh, and yeah in, in practicality what what are the things that we can do for the local church so we can teach them that they that that the believer is the body of christ and the believer belongs to the body of christ so uh, the other things will follow things like you know deriving identity from the head being connected to the head and then uh, you know flowing well with other believers so this truth of us being the body of christ helps us to uh, live out our lives in this way and of course you know uh, as being a part of the body where uh the head has authority we also move in the authority that god has given us and we continue to execute uh, the commands that the head gives us um and yeah so those are those are some of the uh applications of this truth and some of the challenges okay uh, i'll share two challenges which are mentioned here in our notes but i'm sure you know we can discuss and we can talk some more after this so one challenge which uh, a church can have is having people from several cultural and social backgrounds so when that happens uh, if they are not taught that they are the body of christ and various parts have to uh, you know learn to live together learn to serve god together there can be divisions within the church right so as a pastor and a leader we have to be very very sensitive and um, uh, we have to make sure that we are building the church um, uh, by instructing them to have one mind one heart you know that's what paul preached he said you should have one heart and one mind so uh, if we notice any divisions any cliques forming or you know people kind of 
wanting to be only within their own social uh, group then we must see how to bring that uh, uh, how to bridge how to bridge how uh, how can you kind of help these these uh, social groups and you know uh, people from varied cultures to do life together in that local church okay so it's not easy but uh, a pastor can be sensitive about that and um, with the guidance and the direction of the holy spirit um, address that matter i'm reminded of what happened in uh, uh, acts chapter 6 you know remember we discussed when there was an issue of serving food uh, there was a problem between the hebrew speaking jews and the greek speaking jews so there's a cultural difference okay and because of the cultural difference one group uh, one group felt that their widows are being neglected but uh, the leaders of the church then they didn't they didn't just uh, brush off the concern and say hey forget it it's okay you know learn to deal with it they didn't they didn't do it that way but they took it up because there was a group they were feeling uh, left out so the elders dealt with it they appointed seven volunteers and they made sure that food was distributed equally properly to uh, among the widows of both the cultures okay and what happens at the end of that at the end of that passage you see that the church grew the word went out okay right? so the way the leaders dealt with the division made all the difference and the church continued to thrive so when there are uh, division there, there can be differences in in the local church uh, the leaders need to know how to address it in a positive way and what we are discussing in our other class encourage kingdom culture encourage kingdom culture which is beyond the nation that we come from and the, the background that we come from and all of that so kingdom culture that is the emphasis okay uh, yeah then the other uh, challenge here is the non commitment of some believers to a local body because they understand the this truth that we are part of the body of christ but they would like to subscribe to the idea that it's okay not to be planted in a local church because i'm part of the larger body of christ there's nothing wrong in what they say okay however how do you do life if you're not planted in one local body how do you stay accountable right if you're not planted in one body how do you uh, use your gifts and your grace to serve your brothers and sisters if you're floating around you know going to different different churches every weekend every other day or all over the place you're not ready to commit to one local church so that can happen when believers understand that they are part of the uh, the local body the global body in the wide uh, large body of christ so we can encourage the believers to to uh, choose to stay planted and committed in a local church now this can also happen when uh, there are uh, certain ministers of god who have to travel around a lot for their work and that's understandable right they have to travel around. but sometimes it becomes an excuse where they don't want to be Uh, planted in in any church or they don't want to be accountable to uh, any local church so that can become problematic sometimes they might travel around and visit uh, various churches only to promote their ministry and nothing else okay so that's also not nice that's also not nice so uh, what we are saying is one is the believers need to understand this truth that they are part of the body of christ and use the insights uh, and live out the insights at the same time having understood what this means the misapplication might also happen okay and that needs to be prevented so that uh, uh, overall is what we see in this chapter uh, i'm going to pause at this time and if there are um, other thoughts that you may have or you know some questions that need to be answered we can deal with that
so uh, okay in that case i let me ask you a question so uh, how do you balance this truth of being a part of the local body and at the same time belonging to the you know the larger body of christ because every single one of us is a part of the local church and the larger church so how does it work yes yes harsh Yeah. Okay. Um, I belong to a local church, and um, I still go around, you know, with some other activities, you know, that that um, relates to the things of God. But I've not really found a balance, you know, towards, you know, handling the things in the local church and also addressing um, the ones outside, or maybe a global outreach. because you know the task and i see before me in the local church you know is kind of um time consuming that i don't really have time to really address other things you know but one thing you know i've come to understand that god has given us a different platform you know to share his word and mm-hmm. one other way i've used you know to like you know manage the globe the global outreach is through the internet Mm-hmm. you know so i'm seeing you know and it's something that i've come up you know with a concept you know of like um shooting um short films you know that relates to christianity and the body of christ so if i cannot be if i cannot be there in person then i can use you know the platforms that i have to also reach out you know to as many that i want to reach out to and and i and think you know this is the way i kind of balanced in you know, my time you know in the local church and mm-hmm. in the global outreach yeah mm-hmm. yeah thank you thank you arisen thank you for sharing so what you're saying is uh, uh based on the gifts right that god has given you and what he's put in your heart you sort of divide your time between the local church and the other responsibilities right Yeah the the thing I want to also okay. say is that there's some there's some things that I see in the local church that I may not really have you know I may not really have the attitude you know to express it the way I want to express it mm-hmm. or let me say that you know the way you know I see it people may not accept it the way I see it mm-hmm. and how do I how do I share the story how do I tell what i see and the best way i've come up is to is to show a movie that tells the story mm-hmm. or show a short film that tells the story let me take for example if i'm to like you know tell my past okay that what is happening here is not really right you know because you know for me i may go through the word of god you know to see whether such movement is biblical and if it is not you know i'm like i'm not really down with it and how mm-hmm. do i go to tell tell the authority that what you're doing is not right mm-hmm. because you know you don't want to create you know you don't want to create confusion you don't want to be seen as a rebellious christian or a rebellious worker and in those moments you know you just ask the holy spirit for wisdom mm-hmm. but there are so many ways you know we just want to like you know pass on the information you know that god has given us and one way and one you know from me from my own side of the story is that how can i really reach out to the people and when you look at it a lot of people are spending time you know on their phones on their laptops and the best way you know i can do that is to reach them through that medium that they pay attention to and the the more you know i'm busy you know creating content you know that will touch lives you know on the social media the better for the social media 
because you know when you pick up your phone and you like you know browse through or do your research you know you want to see a lot of things that are contrary to the will of God are contrary to the word of God and as we Christians you know how do we come in you know to see that we change you know the narratives you know of this thing and that's mm-hmm. why I feel that it's it is very important that you know we use every medium that we have to propagate you know the gospel just like you know we are sharing here if if um, the initiative you know, has not come up you know for a bible college you know to be online someone like me will not have the opportunity to partake in such a great moment like this so it is very important that we use every medium because i do say that when the devil is you know getting more refined you know in his method in capturing souls what is the christian body doing so why the devil is planning we have to be ahead of him mm-hmm. so that's my take on it thank you yeah sure sure thank you thank you harrison thank you for sharing um yeah so uh, we get that uh, and also i think for lack of time we may not be able to uh take on any more questions or i wanted to add a few thoughts to uh what you said about you know in case the leadership and then you know some issues there but we are going to talk about that in kingdom builders okay so uh please excuse me because i know you have a class to catch and me too so we will uh, wrap up right now uh and uh, samuel maybe you could post your question on the stream page if you don't mind or in, we can answer like it in the next response class. to your question it was it was a response to the question that you asked oh response okay 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 yeah maybe next class. so next class yes yes sounds good sounds good yeah okay all right thank you everyone thank you uh, uh and i'll just say a quick word of prayer we will close with that Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, speaking to us, Father, for uh, Lord equipping us, Lord, with the truth of your word, Lord. We pray that every every word, Lord, uh, of yours will change us. It will transform us. It will renew us, Father God, and Lord, that we will keep uh, moving, uh, Lord, uh, in line. closer to you and father god align ourselves lord to your purposes lord we continue to ask that uh, your hand of blessing will be upon each one of us father god and lord grant us your understanding and a uh, lot of uh, knowledge as we uh, continue with the learning father we thank you once again in jesus name we pray amen 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 so god bless you class thank you once again see you next week bye for now Thank you pass. Thank you. Thank you pass. Thank you man. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Thank you.